The Parsha opens up with uh, Moses standing before Israel. It's the real famous uh, Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebal and the decision, a choice between right and wrong, good and evil, following Hashem or not following Hashem. And um, we've often heard that uh, this idea of if you're not, if you're not uh, walking after Torah, then you you are not following Hashem. I mean, his bottom line, it's not like a, we heard a great uh, illustration about an escalator. If you stop walking up an escalator, you uh, you can go, you know all the way up to the top with no problem. But if you stop walking on stairs, you're not going anywhere. You just are not going anywhere. Life is about decisions and direction. And so he gives us the, 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 gives us this, um, this choice that Hashem lays out. And frankly, this is going to be one of the last times that he communicates at this level to them. And he says, here, here's the choice you have before you. The, the, um, there is also the next part of the text where it deals with the establishment of the temple. Uh, a couple of our rabbis have talked uh, extensively about the third temple, for example, but this idea that the, God, the place where God places his name, uh, the focus is this is where God will choose to dwell, and that's where we worship. And of course, I'm not adapted to trying to talk about the particulars about the, the temple and it's the temple mount, et cetera. I'm not professional in that area for sure. And I'm sure Rabbi Ingber, I mean, Rabbi uh, Avner would have better insight, but this idea that sacrifices and slaughter were particular for the tabernacle and that it was not permissible to slaughter animals outside of the temple for any type of sacrifices uh, however, one could uh, take and slaughter an animal for their own good or whatever that you know for eating, etc. There are such a thing as being able to eat, but the idea is that the blood was not to be consumed. The animals that were brought to the temple were to be given to the priest, and the priest were to be able to do exactly what uh, they are attempting to do to bring the sacrifices. There is the warning in the Parsha about false prophets to guard themselves against false prophets. All of us, uh, I think just about all of us, except uh, our rabbi has uh, come out of following a false prophet or following false teaching. And we didn't know, I would say the vast majority of people that are following false teaching have no clue. And the reason why is there is no, in their mind, they don't have another comparison uh, to find out what illumination and, and trust is. When we read, or and I know for myself, when I read the text where Hashem says that you shouldn't have, there should be no other God. And then when we find out that what God's unity is. And then when we find out that, that God himself says to Moses, if a prophet, even a prophet comes to you and tells you, I'll show you where God is, follow me out to the desert. I mean, have nothing to do with him. If anything, destroy him. It was such a powerful testament because I was the very one that had been following a quote unquote prophet out into a wilderness of misinformation. And now we are here being able to glean from the Torah with such richness and beauty. What an incredible opportunity we have as people that are seekers in the world. And, you know, I, I have to say this for those who are going to be watching the videos later on in the teaching. If you're watching this video and you're sort of on a journey, you're seeking, you're trying to find out where to go. I'm asking you very clearly to become hyper aware and I'm going to use tactical terms that we used in the military. Keep your head on a swivel in your belief systems. Understand that with every view is a counter view. And with every counter view, there are, there are other views. But there is one central truth that will not disappoint you and that will guide you that's coded with the most amazing information. And that is the Torah. The Torah is the book of life. David King David said that the Torah was like a lamp to his feet. So if you want to know where you're going and where to navigate in life, use the Torah. It's the greatest thing. All of us can testify of the beauty of that. And we hope that if you're not 
uh, totally convinced of that, that you'll contact us or continue to watch our videos. This whole idea of following prophets and worshiping idols is very real. We do it today. It's just, it looks different. Now, idolatry of today is nothing like the idolatry of the past. We've learned that so well. Rabbi Avner has, has pointed out the fact that today would be more of a Vodazara, right? It's a following after practices that were, that are, that are associated directly with some level of idolatry. And of course, there's a debate today that says whether Christianity is actual idolatry. Now, there are professionals, uh, sages, and, and teachers uh, of Judaism that would say, well, Christianity is not, not really uh, you know, raised to the level of idolatry, but those of us who come out of it, and now that we've examined the Torah, would say we would probably disagree with that. The reason why we disagree is we've seen the interworkings of that system that goes beyond the Vodazara that calls a man to be the creator of the universe. Even the man, JC, created uh, the universe. They go that far to declare him as God. That's idolatry. And God has saved us from that, and we encourage more people to walk away from that and walk into the beauty of the knowledge of one true God. There is this idea also that came up about kosher food and animals and what, ber what birds and fish are kosher. Uh, we all could talk about that at nauseum. And then the last but not least, this idea of the power of charity and the, the power to give aid and care to someone that's in a time of difficulty. And then it sort of wraps up on this idea of uh, the sabbatical year that occurs every seven years and all loans are forgiven. All indentured servants will be set free in the sixth year. Could you imagine that say in, you know, at any period of time in world history that we could have an international day of, of, um, of a, or a year, like a sabbatical year for the nations, all debt canceled, all lands that are, are uh, being tied up for one thing or another are freed. Could you imagine what would happen to the world economy if no one had a debt tomorrow or the next year? Be incredible. Of course, knowing some of the people's yetzer, they would all pile up their debt until that day. But we know the Torah has an answer for that as well. So that's not uh, a positive thing. Uh, last, the Parshat concludes with the laws of the pilgrim festi festivals, uh, Passover, Shavuot, and Sukkot. And these are considered very holy days uh, for Hashem. And so with the, the text that has been here, let's open it up and start a dialogue on what we've learned about Parshas Re'eh, Deuteronomy 11, 26 through 7, uh, 16, 17. Who would like to be first? Add in, jump in the pile. 